On this episode of Marketing Against the Green, we are gonna talk about how AI is going to completely transform search and why you should care much more about influence than awareness. I am here as always, your co-host, Kieran Flanagan, CMO of Zapier, joined by Kip Bodner, the CMO of HubSpot. Let's get into today's episode. The most, I would say, hotly debated topic in our marketing circles right now when it comes to AI is not different cool AI tools. It is what AI is going to do to the future of search engine optimization, how companies and individuals rank in search engines and get awareness and traffic from those search engines. You started your career as a black hat SEO, you are <laughs> the SEO is in the veins, my friend. How are you feeling about what's happening right now? I know you've you've been thinking a lot about this. You've done some research. Like, where are we at in the world of SEO today? First of all, I would love to try something out on you because you missed Ooh. the uh, you missed the G interview. It was an incredible interview. I'm so uh, sad. I missed the G interview, and I'm pissed about it. We got talking something that I thought would be kind of cool to start oh, this episode because it's related to search, which is in the future, a marketer is less like a marketer today. And in particular, like there's no real channel owners and much more like an entrepreneur in that what a marketer's job becomes is the ability to stitch together these different AI apps and use data in ways to build these like micro apps nearly yes. to deliver like experiences to your customers. And his point would be, there is going to be a lot less need for like these deep, expertise within certain channels, search would be one, paid would be one. What is your initial reaction to that? And then we can kind of dive into search. So first of all, I love G. If you if you all haven't checked that episode out, you should go definitely check that out. But I have a couple of takes on this. The, the first take is that I think you're going to need specialty in places like search because the internet is unbundling. So if you, if you stay with me for a minute, the first generation of the internet, internet 1.0, was very disaggregated, very unbundled. You had AOL, you had all these different little websites, and no search engines were really that great. And then Google comes along, the social web comes along, and we aggregate all of our right. all of our websites, all of our kind of social content, all those things, and it becomes much easier to find, discover. And it's, a, it's a golden age of marketing. Now, we're kind of disaggregating again. We've talked about in the past, Kieran, for example, how YouTube and TikTok are working on search engines for their short form videos. Like that'll be a meaningful part of the search market in the future, right? It won't just be what it, the last 15 years has basically been like, oh, how do I rank on Google? And that's how I get search traffic. So when it's really centralized, you need deep, deep expertise. Right. You'll need a different kind of expertise because there's just going to be a lot of platforms you're going to have to know a decent amount about. So I don't think that like specialty goes away. I think Specialty is going to look different and specialization and marketing is going to look different the next 10 years than it did the last 10 years. I do like the take that marketers will need to become somewhat more entrepreneurial is because what we're going to be doing with AI is building these kind of custom little apps that we can build, whether that is like, I take data from here, I personalize it here, I send it here, I do something with it here, I publish an article here. Like all of that is somewhat like building an app to automate a bunch of stuff, but it's like building a little micro product for you to do things with. So I wanna try something on you right here that I think is gonna be a little bit of a mind shift for, for everybody watching. So I think historically, the last like 10, 15 years of marketing, a marketer's job has basically been to say, hey, here's my brand and product. I'm gonna create a bunch of informational content about my brand, my product, and kind of tangential to it. So if I was a company selling, you know, basketballs, it's not just like, why my basketball is better, but it's how you play basketball, how you improve your shot, how you do all of this stuff, right? And that was basically how you got awareness distribution and you pulled people into you. Now AI democratizes like intelligence and understanding. And with that, it's way easier, it's 10 times easier for people to learn those things and will continue to be. And so what I would posit to you, Kieran, is that what you're saying is right, but for a slightly different reason, is that we're going to move to a world of like transactional use cases. So like if you sell a basketball, in this example, the, the crudest example ever, it's like, what are the ways 
you use a basketball. We'll use it for youth sports leagues, use it for pickup games, use it to practice, right? These are different use cases in which you use Mm. this product. And you are going to create micro apps like you're talking about, Kieran, where it's like, oh, here's an app to like organize and manage your youth basketball league. And it's going to do that. And that's how you're going to get discovered. And through that data, you're going to be able to build a better AI model, LLM model that's customized for your audience and basically recommend basketballs or any kind of related goods that those teams would need and market to them in a much better and much more personal way than right. you ever have before. You buy in what I'm selling on this because it's, actually, it's actually a pretty big shift that not a lot of people are talking about. I actually think maybe your argument is why I think product-led growth, like AI for product-led growth, is the unlock to make product-led growth just ubiquitous across all enterprise software. We had this right? conversation yesterday at our work on our HubSpot <laughs> oh, there offsite. You go. There you go. There you yes. go. Even though I'm not at the offsite for the first You're time ever. You're at the ever, offsite, baby. I'm still at the offsite, baby. Yeah. So I think like all, like we, we don't even need to talk about product-led growth because that's just like part of how you actually build Correct. into the software. But it kind of democratizes product-led growth for everyone. But for everyone. Which, right? it, everyone which is, I, I want to be explicit it. for everybody watching the show today. Product-led growth has always been for software and technology companies. And we're saying like, if you're, if you're a sporting goods company, you can do product-led growth in the future, right? Because right. there will be micro applications that connect to how people shop and buy with you that have a product-led quote unquote experience. Right. There's just a ton of pent up demand for coded and apps that is going to yes. get unlocked because we're going to increase the ability of everyone to do those things. So I think we're going to go to market a lot more through code. And so coming all yes. the way back to search. So I collected a couple of my thoughts and then thoughts from like really good articles I saw put out over the weekend. So I think first of all, we can start from, the, let's just start with what we've talked about forever, which is search engine UIs are turning into like AI backends, right? And is that true Correct. or not? And I think that's just, let's start there from like our starting point. And so, you know, how, how true is this? Because one of the problems with, AI driven search is there is hallucinations. It's not always going to be correct. It's not correct. And someone did a really good breakdown where they went through how search plays out across the different generations of LLM models. So I'll I'll give you three and then kind of pause Please. there. The first generation is obviously GDP three. And mm-hmm. the, after when you think about GDP three as a search engine, right? Like if we say, hey, this is a replacement, this was a search engine, it's not a very good search engine because it has a very low parameter count. The answers are, it's rarely ever updated in terms of the, uh, you know, the data. And today, because it's a older model, companies aren't incentivized to update that data, which means that there is a small number of brands who got put into the initial model and they'll always be shown for actually recommendations or they'll always be shown for certain questions, but the rest is not going to actually get shown very much, right? It doesn't have, a really, it doesn't have much of a long tail, right? So like GDB3 is a search engine, not very good. The second wave is really like ChatGPT, Google Bard, all of these models that had larger amounts of parameter counts. And this is what we're seeing today. Like this is the main thing we see today through Bard, we see through ChatGPT. Much more useful because those models get updated much more frequently. The parameter count is obviously much larger, so it can actually recommend you a diverse set of brands. And then lastly, there is this like really interesting one. Actually, I shouldn't put Bard in two, Bard is in three. Uh, Bart is like two and three, so I'll tell you why. Like three is like the AI experience that sits on an existing search engine, right? So Bart is kind of that where it's like has a backend search engine, Bing has a backend search engine. There is another one I don't know if you've tried called perplexity.ai. Oh, I haven't tried that. Oh, it's super cool, actually. Really cool product. I've been using that a lot. And so these ones are a little bit different. So you have ChatGPT 3 kind of older model, ChatGPT 4, and then you have these other models, which are, has has a search engine as the backend. And... You know, the first model, not very good because it doesn't get updated very frequently. And now it's kind of like a deprecated model. Number two is a little bit better in terms of like getting your your brands to appear in that model, uh, get updated a little more frequently. And then number three is this like interesting one where you have this kind of search engines as the back end and an AI interface. Now I'm going to get into like how search lives in each of those buckets. But what do you think? Do you think, do you think that's the right categorization? I got a couple reactions to that. I do think that's the right categorization. And I think if you are 
watching this and looking for kind of a simple heuristic of how to think about how search is evolving today. What Kieran just went through is awesome. And just like go back and listen to that again. I thought I thought that was I thought that was a great summary. I've been having some conversations, Kieran. One of those conversations is, you know, I'm reminded a lot that AI and search looks a lot like the early days of search and web 2.0. You said something in your breakdown around information being updated, for example. And Kieran, I remember back in the day when like you would start a website and you'd be like, cool, well, I'll rank in search engines in like a month or two once Google crawls me. Right. Like, do you re you remember that? Right. Yeah. And then it got much, much faster. Well, and now, yeah, now it's near instantaneous. So when you talk about some of the limitations of all of these categories of search, for example, with AI, one of the things I believe to be true, because we've said this on for past episodes, is that the cost of running these models is going to come way down. And if the cost comes right down, then they could update the parameters and the freshness of the data used in these models much, much more rapidly. And I think that is one of the things that is really going to have to happen to unlock the value of search and AI. I think if you look at it right now, AI is okay at search. I actually, my controversial take is okay, it's not great at search. And it's better at some searches than others, right? Depending on what type of queries you're running. Uh, you know, if you're running more kind of long-term factual, no kind of like timeliness data, it's much better at those, but it still hallucinates and has some wrong answers and everything there, right? And so I think what we're gonna see is as these model costs get cheaper and the data gets updated faster, that's one of the things that's gonna really drive the next evolution of, of search with AI. Yeah, and I think we have a thread coming up where Ooh, actually yeah, we'll, we'll, make, we'll make the case that AI search is not very good at all. But what does search, what does SEO even mean if you take those three buckets into, into account? Like as a company, what does search even look like? And, and I think where people originally gravitated towards was, oh, well, like it's what is going to happen is we have these AI tools and we can produce much more content. And that is actually not actually going to help in any meaningful way, right? having more content out in the world does not help you rank in any of the scenarios that I give you, right? Doesn't help mm -hmm. you get into any of these different models. The GPT-3 model, there's really not much you can do about no. it and you should not care. Like, how do I get my brand in GPT-3? Doesn't matter, not, doesn't get updated that frequently, a small parameter count. The GPT-4 type models, like you actually need to think about what influences GPT-4 to give your brand back as an answer. This no this is this is the fucking discussion on this topic. Like this is the unlock is Google won the search engine battle cuz it figured out the best signal to rank content page rank. which was page rank and the, the which is their algorithm. What was the what was the top signal in the page rank algorithm, Kieran, that drove ranking? Links. Links. We do not have the equivalent of links for large language models. We have citations from trusted sources. That you think would that's be what it is? I would, like, I, I wonder- I don't think we have it yet, is what I would posit to you. That's the thing I think we're gonna move much more towards, which is like, hey, this model weights things much more heavily if it's mentioned in like Wikipedia or Quora or whatever it may be. It has to have some sort of weighted model. Like even if you just go to look at the training parameters and it weights yes, but it, data it, differently. It, it, it does have to have a weighting model, Kieran. I'm just saying it needs to be more advanced than just like, hey, this thing is mentioned all these places, but it's mentioned in some of these higher quality places, so we're gonna rank it more. Like what's the density of mentions? Who's mentioning it? Like there's there's more layers to it than just like it was mentioned on a trustworthy yeah, site. Yeah, and I think here's the problem is if like if you hear the AI experts articulate why first of all nobody's an it, AI expert right now, but let's go. Well, well, like the people, the, the actual researchers. Yes, this the researchers. Model, yes, they, they. And I think OpenAI's chief research technology officer, whatever yeah. the person, they did the world tour, the kind of world tour where they're like, hey, like OpenAI, we're really excited. Oh, but like we may be destroying the world, but like we're really <laughs> thinking this is really good. But like I did, we might have done something really bad. Did you see that tour? Where it was like, yeah, every yeah, so, every, like, every so often, it's Sam yeah. interjects with like, but I might have done it's something It's like they terrible. don't know if they're nuclear scientists or <laughs> yeah, not. Yeah, it's they don't like, know. Oh, yeah, exactly. We could be adding good for the world or we could yeah. be creating the next nuclear bomb. I don't know. Yeah, I don't and know. It's the, yeah, no, I could have done something terrible. I just don't know. But anyway, what they will tell you is they don't really know how the model decides to answer a question, right? Yes. Like yes. it's to do with like different weight and things. And my point there is creating all this content and doing all these different things 
probably isn't going to help you in any real way because the model is deciding how to weight different data points in terms of how you're being cited and then actually giving back the user the brand that they think is the most trusted for that answer. And so the only thing you can really do is like become a dominant brand. Let's talk yeah. about this. What, what's fascinating is that like, you know, I think you will have a large language model optimization, just like you had search engine optimization. I think a lot of the principles that existed in search engine optimization, making your data available, making it in a, in a schema that is very easy to find and crawl and discover by, you know, by crawlers and bots, all those things are going to remain true and there will be some new things. And I don't think we know what those new things yet. I think that remains true for the next bucket. Well, hold on. One thing I would remind everybody is that Google was around for years before SEO really took off. Right. And we are six months into this game right now with chat GPT and I think the true emergence of AI search. So I think it's okay that we say to ourselves, it's not going to take years for the next generation of search and SEO to happen, but it's going to take more than six months. You know, you could argue today that even if you just take search for Google, people don't really know like there's like some core things we have always believed that influence how we rank within even Google, but Google has changed that algorithm and it's become so much more cumbersome with different yes. you know, tech parameters and changes out al algorithm changes that it's even hard to know. I just wonder if we'll ever know like how the how the model really well, I, I, dictates I don't know what it, that what we it will, answers. But this this is my guide for everybody to think about the future of search kind of agnostic of anything. If the searcher the future of search is what Kieran, you and I believe it's AI. AI is gonna continue to replicate more and more of human thinking, right? Just like you said. We don't know how a lot of the, the researchers don't know how a lot of these models work. Like we don't know how the human brain works and that's like gonna continue to happen, I would argue. But we know some of the ways of how the human brains interprets things, right? And one of the things we know is like frequency and influence matter a lot. Like if we see something repeated and we see something repeated in ways that resonate with us and from people, people that we trust, sources that we trust, then we believe it more, right? And if you're out there thinking about the baseline of it, you just can't go and create stuff anymore in a vacuum. You've got to work with trusted creators. You've got to become a trusted creator yourself. You have to, become you have to trusted. build influence yeah. in the world. We are going from awareness to influence. And we've been slowly on this shift, but that is the future of kind of top of the funnel marketing. It's not like, hey, what is my brand awareness? It is like, what is my brand influence in the market? And how am I moving how the market really actually thinks and rates me in this in this market that I'm trying to play in. Yeah, I agree with that. You have to become an influencer within your category. Last one I just want to touch on, which is, because I'm going through the ones I mentioned previously, is yeah, the, AI, the AI search engine that summarizes blue links. What's really interesting here is, I wonder if all of these things favor dominant brands that exist today, because even that kind of barred Microsoft. They do. The perplexity AI. They actually can only synthesize a certain number of links because of token limits. Now maybe token yes. limits, like I know OpenAI I want to go to a million token limits so they can increase that over time, but there's only a certain amount of the kind of blue links they can go and like, you know, for, kind of summarize together and format. So like it still favors the brands who are top within those blue links to actually get summarized in well, that kind of text that AI has given you. So there, there's two valuable things in what you just said there, Kieran. One is that AI and search are gonna evolve a little slower than people think because of token limits. And that like this hybrid form of search where you can have an AI answer in, some, in a list of links is gonna be around for a while, I personally think. And I, that might be controversial, but I think that's true until we see token limits and model costs and update time really, really change by another order of magnitude. The the second part of that is like, we talk a lot about how AI ha hallucinates, how there's a lot of trust issues with AI, right? And that makes your point, Karen, that established brands, established companies are gonna get favored, right? Because right people are going to be worried about giving untrustworthy answers. And so if there's a, a a timely track record, a longer track record of a company or a brand of an answer, it's more likely to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So first of all, if you haven't hit that subscribe button on YouTube, hit that subscribe button on YouTube. I'm out here in this like country hotel room from my work offsite trying to grind and create this podcast. Kieran is missing sunshine in Ireland. That only happens like 30 days a year. Don't get like, it wrong. Kip Bodner only stays in good hotels. So 
just know that this is this is not this is not the best hotel in the world. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, it was good. It's fine. A good, it's, fine. it's fine. I'm not a good complaining. It's, 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 it's a totally fine hotel. There's no desk chair in this hotel, Kieran. It's just oh, like little like lounge chairs. So it's like it's a weird podcast setup. Uh, but but we're fine. But Kieran, uh, like I said, I've been talking to people as 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 one does. And my setup for your thread is all the people I talk to, I have a lot of ex-Googlers in my life, people who used to work at Google. And they're like, hey, you know, I go and I talk to my my really senior friends at Google about, you know, this AI disruption. And they're like, first of all, they're like, wow, Google's never made a bigger pivot to anything in the company's history than its pivot to AI. And I think that's interesting. The second thing is like, Google's not at all worried about their place in search leadership in this AI era. Mm. They're like, we with what we got coming, we're not at all worried. My question to you as the lead into the thread about uh, you're about to show is like, do you think they're right or do you think they're just too cocky and 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 like lack perspective on on the market? I think they're probably right. I think even some of the I think <laughs> I, do I just what I hate yeah, it. I know I hate it. I, I actually really thought that maybe they'll get super disrupted, and then I saw how quickly they were shipping things. Now this thread is going to go into like why AI search is not very good right now, and it actually makes me think. Okay, if it's not very good to, right now, Bing is not that great. That perplexity.ai I think is interesting just because it's a tiny, tiny team. Why? Why do you like perplexity.ai? Give the viewers a little breakdown. It, it's no different than like a. Bing or Google, other than it's a tiny team, and it actually sometimes can is just as good as like what they are giving back. Okay. And I think that is just like super interesting, right? Like that is interesting. That you can actually mimic some of. Now it's not as if, I'm sure if I went into lots of different searches, it actually falls down in terms of where Google and yeah, I'm sure. Bing Bing are just in terms of the AI experience. But like again, it comes back to wow, you can really replicate a lot of what a large company can do with a tiny team, and I think that's a super interesting thing. But yeah, when you go through this thread, thread, so this is a, I thought this was a, one of the best write-ups I've seen of someone using AI, like generative AI search and just yeah, going I through like, really good. it's super, it's not that good. Also, he does this entire thread with referencing Zelda Tears of the Kingdom as like his example, which is amazing because one, Zelda's the best character in the Nintendo franchise, in the Nintendo universe. I'm sorry, Zelda and Link are... That, that, that those characters are better than Mario and all all the others. If you agree, comment YouTube. If you disagree, comment YouTube. What, what's your take? Are you are you team I, Link and Zelda? I'm or a, team I'm a, somebody else. Definitely not team Zelda. I what? never got it. My brother. How are you not my bro- team my, Zelda? My brother loves Zelda. Did you not I play can, the original Zelda, the I played, gold cartridge I the, uh, on uh, NES? Did you I have a childhood? I, I I played it and did not enjoy it. This these How little is puzzle that even games possible? were you. You're like going into little things and you have to work. I just like Mario. It's pretty simple. You run along the screen, you eat a mushroom, you jump on someone's head. It's like awesome. Use the candle to burn the bush and go down the secret yeah, I, stairs. I don't want to. I don't want to think about it. Too much. Too, too much thinking Legendary. for me. These puzzle games. I'm not Legendary. a puzzle game person. I'm a Mortal Kombat. Let me <sighs> click all the buttons and see if I can rip your head off. Kind of game. Kieran is for violence. Is what you should really take away from today's violence episode. Violence or, or is for or, violence, <laughs> or like a little guy running around and jumping in your head. Uh, like simplicity. Simplicity. I like simplicity in my life, Kip. I don't like to have to be. Uh, I, I, I hear you. I just think I think Link is like an all timer, and the Zelda franchise is an all timer. But we can we can agree to disagree. But. I, I was just sharing that with the, the viewers because I thought that was a funny way that this thread was done, that he all the examples were kind of related to the new Zelda game for, for yeah. Nintendo Switch. Yeah, and I think I think one of the things he talks about that we should really touch on is really all Bard is doing is doing a bad job of taking the results that Google have already like yes. perfected. Like this is the actually that's interesting the point. thing. That's, like, that's the point. The, the, to get yeah, across. the thing I took away the thread was like Wow, like Google have like this incredible search engine. And because they're rushing to market, they've put this kind of like pretty, you know, not basic, but they put this AI model on top of it that does a worse job than the blue links at paraphrasing the blue links and then pushes the blue links down. And the reason I brought up the like perplexity.ai is because if you compare like the AI results, they're not too differentiated. Like Bard yeah. is probably much better. But then if you actually start clicking on the links, like Google is obviously much, much, much better. And that's their forte. And so like, you know, it was just a, it was a good for even for me. It was a good grounding in like, oh yeah, all they're really doing, all this AI thing is kind of doing at the moment is like badly scraping other badly people's content, badly summarizing the blue links, and, and then trying to summarize it and doing a far worse job than the actual people who have actually put the time and effort mm-hmm. into answering these questions. 
and whose web pages are like ranking there in the top 10. Well, well my, my biggest takeaway from this thread was that if you are a product writer and reviewer at Wired and you use Zelda as your example for your teardown of Google Bard, then it is obvious that your last name is going to be Ravencraft. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, this guy couldn't be more on brand if he tried. It was la yeah, he is one of the all time great last names. I do love this here. Like this was actually one of the great points, which is the reason Google are paraphrasing these things is because they don't want to be plagiarizing. Uh, yes. But like, this is a really great line, which it, like, I believe Google, when it says it's not technically plagiarizing, but only because real plagiarism would suck a lot less. <laughs> so like, <laughs> it's like, they're it's actually, like, no, please plagiarize Google, please. Yeah, please, please plagiarize. So they're trying not to plagiarize. And so they're trying to paraphrase this, the content and it makes the content a lot worse. And so he just goes into like all of the experience he's had in trying to like search for things, get a bunch of results and just how the AI experience is much, much worse. And it's worse as well because, you know, Google has done an incredible job of integrating images and maps and all these different things into the search results. And the AI component that tries to like paraphrase those things and bring them into like the AI portion of the interface Bard, it actually isn't doing a very, very good job. And so I think to, my, to your point earlier, he says the same of Bing and I use Bing. I find it quite useful in a lot of times, but who do I think is going to iterate much, much faster? Like Google, uh, Google mm -hmm. have an entire company's worth of talent solving this problem. So it a kind of uplifting and also depressing kind of summary of today's show, I feel like. Conglomerates we think, win. We, we think, you know, bigger brands are going to win. We think search engine in an AI world is going to look very similar to search engine optimization in a pre-AI AI world, but search is going to be way more fragmented. It's not going to just be about Google, you know, YouTube, TikTok, Reddit, all of these other sources of data for lack of a better kind of descriptor of them are going to become, you know, meaningfully important search engine in their own right. Let me take back what I said. So I think that Google win the all-in-one package yes, search But that engine. market share is going to shrink. But that market share is going to shrink. Yeah, this is baby. A, yeah, this is the end point we should end on. It's like, yeah, they win the all-in-one. They probably have better technology. But is that, do people find that as useful or as meaningful or the thing they want to use as they have in the, is it as dominant as it has been in the past? No, because I can even tell you from my own search habits, I am not just using Google I'm using Bing, using ChatGPT. And so I think it Same. gets much more fragmented and the market share goes down. Yeah. And so what, what we're really telling everybody as our close of what you need to do is keep doing what you're doing in terms of getting content and putting it in the public and making it easily discoverable because that's going to continue to be an important part of this. We're saying to think about your brand marketing more as, a, as influence and how do you work with creators, become creators yourselves as your brands to build enough influence to actually, as the ranking factors for these models evolve, you can be there and well-established. And we're also saying that like trust and credibility is an issue. So the longer, more longer term, more credible folks like Kieran, you and I've been doing this podcast for over a year now. So we're more likely to get included in a result than somebody who launched a podcast last month, right? Right. Exactly. And so that's the that's kind of the juxtaposition that we are telling you all to go and think about and do. And understand this is going to be a very dynamic market. We'll be having lots of discussions about it on to, on the show over the next year plus. But a lot of what you need to do is keep doing what you're doing and understanding that AI is going to unlock PLG, kind of going back to our initial conversation, Kieran. And micro applications, free applications, regardless of what industry your business serves, are gonna become a bigger part of your marketing strategy. 100%, 100%. Because AI cannot replicate in detail those use cases of those micro yeah. apps as well as the micro app can. And so AI will direct people to your micro app and that's gonna allow you to capture more people and monetize them more effectively. Yeah. PLG is going to eat software. Product-led growth, baby. Kieran, Kieran's like, I made the right Position myself correctly again. <laughs> Woo. Nailing it. All right. This has been Marketing Against the Grain. Yeah. This has been AI Search, and we will be back with you real soon. This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history. Calls, support tickets, emails, and here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot, grow better.